。大家好，欢迎大家收睇《国安法事件簿二》。恐怖活动呢四个字听落都惊，相信大家都同我一样，最深刻印象嘅就系死伤十分严重嘅恐怖袭击，由一个组织策划同行动，只不过。恐怖活動罪應該同香港人無關啦。咩話？香港出現恐怖活動，我即刻過嚟。恐怖活動罪包括為咗脅迫中央人民政府、香港特區政府或者國際組織，或者威嚇公眾以圖實現政治主張、組織策劃。实施、参与实施或者威胁实施，造成或者意图造成严重社会危害嘅恐怖活动嘅行为，例如爆炸、纵火、投放毒害性、放射性、传染病病原体等物质，严重干扰、破坏水、电、燃气、交通、通讯。网络等公共服务，以及以其他危险方法严重危害公众健康或者安全嘅行为等。而孤狼式本土恐怖活动早前就曾经喺香港发生，一名男子而受到失实资讯以及煽动性言论激化而策动孤狼式恐怖袭击，喺铜锣湾袭击一名警员，凶手喺刺伤一名男警之后自残身亡。啱啱睇完咗誒呢個案例啦 ，Thomas， 你覺得我哋而家香港面對一啲乜嘢嘅恐襲風險咧？對於一般市民嚟講咧，其實你同佢講恐怖襲擊呢啲嘢咧，即係大家都會即刻聯想到我哋睇電影咧，係即係好大規模有組織嗰啲犯罪嗰啲好有錢嗰啲組織嘅情況先至會出現。咁、嗯、但係之前見到有啲誒案例啦，誒一個因都可以。犯到呢啲恐怖誒襲擊嘅罪行，冇錯，係咪？咁誒喺香港，其實我哋咧就誒、呃、國安法通過咗兩年，都有啲案件，其實我哋可以借鏡去睇嘅。關於誒、呃、國安法第廿四條嗰個罪行，嗯，有一個案例，如果你記得阿 C M 誒唐英傑案誒、呃，其中一個罪咧就係、是、恐怖誒、呃、活動罪，就係、是、第廿四條嘅，冇錯。呢件案咧一個因做嘅啫。我諗誒，即係個案情本身個官事其實都幾長嘅，寫得幾詳細嘅，分析咗佢當時好多行為上面做咗啲咩嘢啦。佢揸架電單車幾多馬力都講埋嘅，做咗好多樣嘢喺一啲咁特定嘅環境之下做嘅。重點問題對法官嚟講咧，就係佢做呢啲嘢其實係唔係干犯咗誒恐怖主義罪咧？佢係唔係脅迫緊中央政府或者香港政府或者市民？透過武力或者話會用到武力嘅，去脅迫佢哋作出一個政治主張咧。而呢啲行為對社會、對市民嘅影響係咩、嗯？我覺得呢啲全部都係法庭有考慮到，亦都係要考慮嘅因素啊，特別係啊。喺個判決度，我個印象最深刻嘅咧，就係你要告一個人話佢係恐怖活動罪第廿四條，仲要係入罪嘅話咧，係好難。嗯、<笑>因為咧誒喺個。法庭當其時審個案咧，佢提出啲要求啊，佢話控方嗱呢樣嘢你一定要證明，嗰樣嘢你一定要證明。冇錯。咁喺呢條廿四條嗰度，我記得最清楚咧，佢要求控方證明就係話，你話阿唐英傑做咗啲咁嘅嘢，點樣去構成、造成或意圖造成社會危害？冇錯。乜嘢叫做嚴重社會危害咧？咁、嗯、最後咧，即係討論完一大輪之後咧，咁啊法庭咧就。認定咗，佢話當其時嗰個證據顯示，唐英傑揸住架電單車咁樣嘅行為咧係目無法紀嘅，佢係去挑戰挑戰緊法治，法庭就覺得就係已經足夠構成咗頭先所講嘅造成嚴重社會危害。咁咧，另外一個咧就係佢話你插住支旗，嗰支旗係有推動港獨或者煽動嘅意圖。佢係故意咁樣，好似遊街咁樣，仲向警察衝擊嘅話，係已經係構成咗第廿四條裏邊威嚇公眾意圖咧
係實現佢個政治主主張，因為佢之期宣示嗰之期嗰樣嘢就係證明佢係宣示佢呢個政治主張，咁亦都係證明到嗰一個另外一個誒構成嗰個罪行嘅其中一個要素。嗯，咁啊呢兩點咧，我覺得即係法庭係即係考慮得好清楚去落一個咁樣嘅決定咯。呢、這、一個誒罪行本身嘅門檻其實真係幾高。即係如果你一個普通市民咧，話有冇可能誤墮法網呢？我覺得係非常之難嘅。喺香港嘅法院咧，記住一個普通法嘅法院嚟嘅。雖然條法例本身咧係人大常委定立，係一條大陸系嘅法法律啦，但係香港法院始終係用翻我哋普通法嘅刑事嘅標準去審呢一條案例嘅。法院係要控方係冇合理疑點之下 ，beyond reasonable doubt， 證明到呢一啲係成立，先正可以告得入嘅。咁所以我諗誒、嗯、都係頭先誒 Thomas 講嗰樣嘢啦，誤墮法網嘅機會真係不高嘅。睇完呢個判決咧，令我覺得咧，我哋一般個信念即係以為咧，誒、呃、呢、這個恐怖襲擊或者恐怖活動罪一定係要話好大規模啊，犯罪組織先做到咧，唔係嘅原來一個因都可以犯一個咁嚴重嘅罪行。嗱 ，C.M. 你記得除咗唐英傑案之後咧，都有兩宗類似嘅個案咧。都係我哋叫做孤狼式、啊、自己一個人去行事嘅喎。嗯，係啊，我都有啲印象啊，就誒兩單都係針對警方嘅，用一啲利器啦，就一個人咁去襲擊、呃、警察嘅。咁我印象中好似兩單都係七月一號添嘅，即係都係回歸嘅時候，趁住一啲、呃、重要嘅日子去發生呢件事。咁、呃、其中一單仲牽涉到人命添嘅、呃，真係唔可以睇少呢一啲案件啦、呃。而呢樣嘢亦都唔係香港獨有啦，我哋、嗯。亦都見到好多外國嘅例子咧，都有一啲誒、呃、一個人誒、呃，因為佢思想誒激化咗，誒、呃、佢想推動一個政治嘅理念，就用透過一啲武力傷害市民、傷害公眾、傷害誒、呃、公職人員嘅方法嚇、啊，譬如喺德國、喺法國、嗯、英國，我哋都見到唔少嘅例子。咁所以你問我講咧，真係需要有條咁嘅誒講法去誒、呃、禁止呢一類嘅行為，其實非常之重要咯。當呢個國安法啱啱推出咧，有好多人即係就批評就話咧，我揸架電單車跟住撞人，最多咪就係交通事故或者係普通、呃、犯罪，點解要用另外一條恐怖活動罪嚟告我呢？咁嚴重嘅犯罪行為本身係已經構成一個犯罪，但係再加上係有政治主張同埋威逼嗰個政府或者係威嚇公眾人士咧，就會係我哋叫做。加咗料啊、嗯，即係將將嗰件案加咗料。冇錯。咁亦都留意到咧 ，C M 喺判刑嗰陣時，其實係亦都反映咗嗰件事嗰個嚴重性。如果大家仲記得咧，誒唐英傑判咗九年嘅，佢就有啲交替控罪嘅。其實佢告咧就告咗成三條罪嘅、嗯。第一條咧就係呢一個分裂國家嘅。咁啊，但係咧佢有恐怖活動罪啦，同埋亦都真係告咗佢交通罪嘅。危險駕駛引致他人嚴重受傷。呢、嗯、一、這個分裂國家罪咧，其實就判咗佢六年半嘅。咁另外呢一個恐怖活動仲有八年，咁但係加埋呢有部分就重疊，所以最後呢，佢係坐九年。咁所以呢，就、呃、你問我嘅話呢，真係唔輕嘅，即係普通嘅交通罪行當然冇咁重啦，但係佢個性質係好嚴重。頭先講咗有咁多誒、呃、額外嘅元素啦，我叫住我用好彩呢兩個字啦，因為如果喺《國安法》個條文之下呢，最高嘅刑罰呢可以係終身監禁。咁、嗯、啊、呃，由十年至終身監禁呢，係最嚴重嘅一個誒範疇。佢係未去到最嚴重嗰一類嘅，唐英傑先生。咁就係第二類，就係三年至十年嘅。咁但係亦都喺三三年至十年裏面，佢係偏重嘅啦。你睇得出。咁最低嘅咧，亦都係三年或以下嘅。咁我諗都係奉獻一句啦，即係恐怖主義就係一個非常之嚴重嘅罪行嚟嘅，千祈唔好以身試法咯。恐怖襲擊應該就冇嘅，有啊，就唔係我哋而家個年代，上個年代嗰啲有炸彈案嗰啲咯。掟到拆掟曬啲嘢咁嗰啲，咪叫恐怖襲擊叫咩？之前看新聞的話，應該是有，但是我在這邊工，呃，待了一年多，是沒有發現有。香港係有出現過恐怖襲擊嘅，喺誒國安法誒通過之後，根據國安法第二十四條。如果有人咧係犯一啲好嚴重暴力嘅行為，譬如傷害人啦、身體啦，譬如整炸彈啦、炸人啦
或者係破壞公共設施啊、破壞網絡啊、嚇投毒啊咁樣嘅依啲嚴重嘅犯罪行為嘅目的係意圖咧，或者係想造成誒嚴重社會嘅危害，同埋咧係用嚟咧係威逼誒中央人民政府或者香港特區政府或者係國際組織，或者係咧威嚇公眾。意圖達到佢嘅政治主張咧，呢、这個都係會構成誒、啊、恐怖活動罪嘅。一般我哋講到恐怖主義嘅時候，就會聯想到一啲大型嘅恐怖襲擊嘅喎 ，Thomas。係啊，係啊，即、就、係、是、有組織嘅犯罪行為啊嘛。嗯，但係其實亦都未必一定嘅喎，可能恐怖主義係一啲個人嘅行為都可以嘅喎。係啊，所以喺依個誒恐怖活動呢個範疇咧，我哋今日咧就請咗個專家，咁佢係資深大律師，亦都係法律教授，亦都係前律政司嘅刑事檢控專員 ，Mr. Granville Cross。Mr. Cross， welcome。Thank you very much。Welcome。Thank you。喺誒新嘅香港國安法之下咧，就有一條罪行咧，就叫做恐怖活動罪嘅。咁但係似乎個罪行本身咧就冇一個好誒明顯嘅誒清晰嘅定義，乜嘢叫做恐怖呢樣嘢？咁啊有啲咩嘅睇法咧 ？Well, there are certain characteristics that we see when we look at various uh, uh, anti-terrorism models uh, around the world, uh, and our uh, anti-terrorism law uh, draws uh, upon those. I suppose the the central characteristics are obviously an intent to commit some sort of terrorist act. Uh, an intention that、uh, it be committed、uh, with a political motive,、mm -hmm. uh, which will invariably、uh, also be associated with harming uh, society, mm -hmm. uh, and with a view to coercing the government or an international organisation、uh, into doing things that、uh, it's not prepared to do or doesn't want to do,、uh, or indeed uh, uh, intimidating uh, members of the、uh, section of society, the the, the public,、uh, in, in a particular way. So it's、uh, it's basically designed to achieve political ends、uh, through threats,、uh, which may take various for forms,、uh, and of course various actions, such as actually、uh, harming particular individuals, for example. 喺二零一九年嗰陣時，香港咧就誒基於嗰個反修例嘅嘅運動咧，咁啊有好多案件誒喺當其時犯事嘅人咧就用暴動罪去告佢。如果今時今日喺國安法底下，會唔會構成誒恐怖活動罪嘅咧 ？Certainly, some of the activities that we saw in in 2019-2020 would constitute terrorist activity. Those type of activities, which were designed to coerce the government into a particular course of action, would all constitute terrorist activities under modern definitions. But remember this as well that uh, the uh, present anti-terrorism law, in some ways, supplements the existing criminal law.、Mm. So, for example,、uh, someone could be charged with a,、uh, a terrorism offence、uh, with an alternative offence, for example, of, of unlawful wounding or wounding someone with、mm. intent. That's very common、mm. uh, in, in, in the in criminal justice system that you do have alternative charges. And indeed, we saw that in the Tong Yin Kit case.、Correct. He was、uh, actually charged with the terrorist activity,、uh, but he was also charged in the alternative. Uh, with causing grievous bodily harm by dangerous, dangerous driving. driving、yes. So, if for any reason the terrorist charge、uh, had not resulted in a conviction,、uh, prosecutors would have had an alternative charge for the court to consider, which was、uh, related to the the manner of the driving, which uh, 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 injured particular officers.、Mm -hmm. uh, and so, to answer your question specifically, it would have been possible to lay other charges, perhaps with these other charges in the alternative. If we use this terrorist act to punish and punish, that penalty would be. 普通你頭先講另類嘅罪行會高好多嘅啦，係咪咧 ？That's certainly possible because under the substantive offence of、uh, of terrorism, the maximum penalty is between ten、uh, years and、uh, and life imprisonment. And for secondary characters who aren't so actively involved in the organisation or the arrangement or the planning or the commission,、uh, then the the maximum penalty is between three and and ten years imprisonment. So so certainly yes, that would have been a possibility. 當誒我哋第一單國安法嘅案件，即係唐英傑案件，誒判咗刑之後咧，誒我都聽到好多誒誒香港本地嘅評語也好啦，或者外地嘅評語都好咧，就係話啊呢條罪行非常之嚴苛嘅，依一條簡單普通嘅誒交通罪行咧，都係判得好重嘅刑。可唔可以同我哋分享下誒外國有冇一啲類似嘅例子？佢哋嘅量刑嘅標準又係咪類似咧？
Well, most of these cases tend to turn on their own facts, but uh, certain trends uh, emerge once you look around the globe and which see how these cases are normally handled. And any case involving terrorism uh, is invariably treated very seriously indeed. Uh, I suppose there may be exceptions where someone is extremely young, perhaps, or, or aged or, or ill, when uh, a more lenient approach uh, might be possible. Uh, but, uh, as I say, the consistent trend throughout the world uh, is to punish these types of cases very severely. Uh, and on the case of Tongyin Kit that you mentioned, it's interesting, of course, that uh, even though he did receive a severe sentence, a tough sentence, uh, he didn't appeal against it. Mm. So uh, uh, he was obviously prepared to, to accept it, and one imagines that he would have taken advice on that. Uh, so uh, anyone who indulges in terrorist activity uh, must, be, uh, must expect to face uh, condign punishment. Uh, as I say, the, the legislature, uh, by the penalties it imposes, indicates to the uh, courts uh, and to the lawyers how seriously a particular case uh, should, be, should be treated. Mr Tong, of course, was lucky that he didn't fall into the, the most serious bracket uh, under Section 24, which would have made him liable for between 10 years imprisonment and life imprisonment. Correct. He was treated as being uh, in the second bracket mm -hmm. of between three and uh, eight years imprisonment. Of course, had he pleaded guilty from the outset, uh, he would have received uh, a one-third discount, one imagines, mm. uh, and uh, that would have reduced it to something like four or five years. Uh, and in fact, at the end of the day, given that, given that, he, uh, that he did serve time in custody uh, before, before the trial took place, uh, and uh, given that he, if, he, if he behaves himself well in prison, he would be entitled to the custody remission, mm. which can be as much as one-third, uh, he would only end up doing something like four to five years imprisonment altogether. So uh, I think that has to be borne in mind as well when one, when one considers the, uh, the nature of the, of the punishment he's received. But uh, to answer your point in particular, terrorism cases everywhere are treated very seriously indeed. But we noticed, for example, the Tang Ying Kie case, there is a person who is guilty. So this kind of violent attack is also a kind of violent attack. Have you ever noticed some violent attack in your experience? 唔再係一般人認為係哦，要集團式先至會係有呢個誒恐怖活動啦。Well, this of course is the is the great concern of police forces around the world.、Uh, many people have been radicalised by various extremist groups,、uh, and as a result of the radicaliz radicalisation they've undergone, they often don't necessarily act、uh, in concert with others. They take it upon themselves、uh, in order to commit their terrorist acts. Clearly, if people are working within an organisation. Uh, and there's a lot of infrastructure backing them up before they commit a terrorist attack. Then it's easier for the the police to penetrate those sort of organisations. But if someone just acts on their own without reference to other people, then that makes it very difficult indeed for the the police to to gain intelligence、uh, in advance and to try and close the operation down.、Uh, and one notorious instance, of course, of a, of a lone wolf operation was、uh, arose in Manchester uh, in uh, sorry 2017.、Uh, an Islamist terrorist there、uh, went to the uh, the uh, Manchester arena. Uh, and uh, let off、uh, a bomb, killing some 22, 23 people. So that was the sort of thing that it would be very difficult for police intelligence to to crack in advance.、Uh, and likewise with the lone wolf attack, which we saw on July the first, when a police officer was suddenly attacked out of the blue、mm -hmm. by a man wielding a knife who stabbed、yeah. stabbed him in the back. So these are a nightmare for、uh, for law enforcement agencies everywhere,、uh, and、uh, one can only hope that、uh, they can.、Uh, Improve their intelligence、uh, by whatever means. I mean, they obviously are a very real threat,、uh, and in some some ways,、uh, a greater threat than、uh, the more organised terrorist activities, which, as I say, can sometimes be identified in advance. 現時咧，網上恐怖襲擊呢個趨勢咧嚴唔嚴重，同埋你覺得咧係我哋需唔需要重視咧 ？I'm sure that the, the 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 national security department in the police force is working very closely uh, with the uh, uh, police、uh, cyber security and technology crime bureau. To monitor these type of activities to the extent that they are occurring in Hong Kong, and I'm sure they must be occurring. Obviously, it's a highly insidious、uh, type of crime.、Uh, fortunately, so far as I'm aware, there have been no significant cases、uh, in Hong Kong since the national security law was introduced.、Uh, and going back to a point that I made earlier about there being a certain amount of overlap between different offences, you may recall last year that there was a case in the district court、uh, of doxing, where an immigration、mm. department、uh, official released the Uh, private inf information 
of some 200 public officials uh, onto the internet with malign intent. Uh, and the judge, when he sentenced the uh, individual concerned, actually called it a case of cyber terrorism mm. uh, and uh, re referred to it internet al Qaeda. Mm. So there is a certain amount of uh, of, uh, of of overlap between the, these various types of offences. But obviously, I, I I I think that we're very fortunate in having a very strong police capability to try and identify this type of crime uh, and to to, to neutralise it. And perhaps the fact that we've seen no significant cases of cyber terrorism so far uh, suggests that, uh, that the, the problem is being contained here. But I'm sure at the same time that the police won't be uh, complacent in the, in, the, in the slightest. 香港很多年輕人成日都上網,有啲乜嘢你會建議佢哋要小心嘅呢? So behave as responsibly uh, when you're online as you do hopefully uh, in your in your private lives. I mean, normally you wouldn't go around threatening people in order to achieve what you want. You wouldn't go around harming people uh, in order to secure particular ends. And you wouldn't go around trying to cause people, other people to be in fear uh, in order to uh, obtain something that, uh, that you want. Uh, so behave as responsibly online uh, as you would, uh, would offline. Uh, and obviously that would be a very sensible way of going about things. And of course it goes back to there being proper education in the schools in any event, that uh, people are required to have basic moral values. Any society at the end of the day depends on those. Uh, and uh, th these have to be taught properly uh, in the schools and hopefully they are now being taught properly in the schools. 會通過的一條法例是由全國人大常委通過的一條全國性法律well, of course, uh, the, the 21st century has in many ways been an era of uh, terrorism. Uh, and there's been a general recognition that kid gloves are not a proper response to this type of crime. This is a unique and horrific type of crime, uh, which, uh, which can only be combated, combated with stringent uh, legislation, which will act as some sort of deterrence and will facilitate police investigations. Of course, after the 9-11 uh, attacks in, in the United States in 2011, uh, 2001, the uh, US government responded with its Patriot Act, yep. which contains far-reaching powers of investigation, uh, of sentencing, uh, and of prosecution. Uh, the UK has introduced uh, all types of legislation in recent years. In fact, they, they seem to have a new one virtually every year. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> in the last two years, they, they came out with a, uh, I think it's called the, the, the Counter-Terrorism and Sentencing Act, mm -hmm. which uh, imposes very strict uh, sentencing regime uh, in relation to terrorist uh, people being convicted of terrorism, uh, including even forfeiture of uh, remission. You know, yep. people normally uh, have remission if they behave themselves in prison. Uh, that, that's been taken away. Uh, the National Security and Investment Act uh, also came into effect earlier this year, uh, and that gives the police wide powers to in interfere where transactions, business transactions, are thought to be anyway associated with, uh, with national security. There's a new Terrorism Act now being debated by the British Parliament. Mm -hmm. That'll probably come into effect uh, within the next uh, few months. Uh, that contains all sorts of draconian provisions, uh, including, for example, even restricting the rights of accused persons to uh, legal aid. Mm -hmm. In this part of the world, of course, uh, two other common law jurisdictions are Singapore and Malaysia. They both have highly draconian anti-terrorism legislation. Of course, both countries have the death penalty. Both countries do not, unlike Hong Kong, apply the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Correct. In both countries, suspects can be, uh, national security suspects, uh, including terrorism suspects, can be detained on executive order for two years at a time, which can then be extended indefinitely if the, if the prosecution and the police authorities don't have enough evidence to, to charge them. Uh, and many of the decisions which the authorities take in relation to terrorist suspects are, are simply not uh, judicially reviewable in the course of cases. So those are very strict uh, regimes uh, in comparison with ours. So a lot of the criticism that has been directed at us has been uh, wholly unmerited. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's been, uh, been made to justify a hostile political agenda, which some people have towards China. Mm. Uh, and on a closer scrutiny, one can realise that uh, Hong Kong is actually very fortunate to have uh, the type of legislation which it's now got. Because unlike the UK, unlike uh, the United States and so on, Hong Kong actually puts the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights front and centre. 
mm -hmm. uh, of the new legislation. Yep. It's there in Article 4, yep. which actually specifies, so, <laughs> so there could be no possible doubt about it, yep. that anyone who's charged under that, uh, under that uh, law uh, is entitled to the protections, uh, the fair trial guarantees, which are contained in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. So really, the, the National People's Congress uh, Standing Committee went that extra mile by incorporating that mm -hmm. so that everyone would be aware that uh, the new legislation was not intended to erode or let alone eradicate the traditional freedoms, which uh, traditional rights and uh, freedoms which uh, people accused of crime have always enjoyed in our common law jurisdiction. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Cross. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.